Daniel Natal videos. Not as good as the book. In the lead up to the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict, I'll be honest, I assumed that through intimidation and corruption the process would be subverted. I was anxious about certain cynical social engineers using it to demoralize the last remnants of the populace who believed in rule of law in America. I was delightfully surprised when I was proven wrong. Of course, no sooner was Rittenhouse exonerated than we learned that the men in the Ahmad Aubrey case met a very different fate. In that case, justice was averted and we lurched back into an now predictable pattern. Happening upon a random video, I was struck by an insight that Jordan Peterson had. See here. You pair these rats together, and what you find is that, so the little rat has to ask the big rat to play, and the big rat will, like, you know, break his cool and then wrestle. And then if you pair them repeatedly, unless the big rat lets the little rat win 30% of the time, the little rat will no longer ask him to play. Yeah. Like, and I read that, it was like, a little electrical storm went off in my that brain. That is what I happened thought, to me, too. Jordan Peterson's rat analogy jumped out at me. The system has to let us win at least 30% of the time, or else we'll disengage totally, and they fear that. This fear was on display recently when left-wing news outlets were fretting about Trump's new Truth Social Initiative and the emergence of a parallel conservative media apparatus and economy. In the article, Right Wing Builds Its Own Echo Chamber, we read, The bottom line? Conservative media has been a powerhouse for a long time, but this phase of its expansion isn't just about more or louder conservative voices. It's about building an entire conservative ecosystem. The reality is, they're getting nervous about patriotic Americans, whom they deplatformed, building their own parallel red state economy and cultural zone. They need us to participate in the old system, however, if only to prey on us, to milk us, to parasitically live off the productivity we produce. It's like an abuser who needs to be nice 30% of the time so that his victim won't leave him, so he buys her flowers after giving her a black eye. And it's this 30% number that jumps out at me with regard to the seeming victory of Kyle Rittenhouse. Fun fact, no matter how much the average U.S. voter wants a particular bill to become a law, the statistical chance of that happening is 30%. See here. In this study, we read, In our 1,779 policy cases, narrow pro-change majorities of the public got the policy changes they wanted only about 30% of the time. So we appear to live in a system where oligarchical factions have rigged things to be like Jordan Peterson's Big Rat analogy. They win 70% of the time, but throw us some crumbs 30% of the time just to ensure that we stay in that abusive relationship. The last thing they want is us creating our own parallel media system and economy. So the oligarchs deploy operatives to try and herd us back into the pen. Like Representative Dan Crenshaw, a putative Republican, but in reality, a Klaus Schwab stooge who belongs to the World Economic Forum's Young Global Leaders Association. He and other Pied Pipers from the fake conservative movement, commonly called Conservative Inc., are sent out to teach patriots how to lose well. Like Job's three friends in the Bible, they're deployed to tell us to curse God and die, or rather, to curse America and die. These are the people who tell us that we need to accept the ceaseless slide of the Overton window to the left because the Republican Party needs a big tent. But then, clown world always does. Bread and circuses. Circuses love big tents. These phony conservatives and billionaire-backed grifters were the ones trying to sabotage Trump back in 2015 and attempting to promote unelectable candidates like Marco Rubio to ensure a Hillary win. We all know their names. The ones who pretended to be standing on principle, but who in reality were there to sabotage patriot movements and to teach us how to lose like gentlemen. Back at the Continental Congress in 1787, Governor Jerry of Massachusetts said, The people do not want virtue, but are the dupes of pretended patriots. It's just as true now as it was back then. The pretended patriots running around now are the operatives of the 1%, paid to keep you down at 30%. My point here is, just be mindful, pay attention to the percentages, and if you're in an abusive relationship, sometimes, well, let's just put it this way, if you're not the big rat, it may be time to jump off the sinking mainstream media. In the Republic of Venice and the Renaissance, whenever they wanted to shrewdly publicize something, they'd pretend as if it was a state secret. Busybodies would then pick it up and promote it. So. Here's a secret. You can get free shipping and handling on our new bookazine, Trump World, by keying in Trump 25DN. That's Trump 25DN. Let's work to build that parallel media apparatus and stop playing by their rules. Pass it on. <laughs>